On the first episode of the Unrivaled Podcast, sophomore tight end Pat Fryermuth tells us about a phone call that changed his life. When Coach Ronnie told me and called me and said I have an offer from Penn State, I was I was kind of shocked. Yo, what's up? Unrivaled, the official podcast of Penn State football. Well, welcome into episode one of the Unrivaled Podcast, the official podcast of Penn State football. I'm your host, Mitch Gerber, and it's officially time to kick this thing off and what better way to do so than to welcome in number 87, Pat Frymuth. Pat, how are you doing today? Great, how are you? I'm great, man. You kidding me? Podcast one, episode one, here we go. All right, so here's how this thing's going to work. This podcast is designed specifically to bring the fans inside this program to hear these players' stories. Mostly what they like to do away from the field, away from the X's and O's. Now, we're not just going to stop there. We're going to talk to our coaches, our alumni, and really anybody else that's involved with this story program. So, With that, make sure that you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date as we dive into the stories that matter to you. Send us your thoughts, questions, comments, really anything. We want to hear them at Penn State Football or at Mitch Gerber 8. And without further ado, what do you say we jump straight into this thing? Pat, you grew up about uh, seven and a half hours away in a little town called Merrimack, Massachusetts. Tell me about it. What was it like there? Uh, It's a small town in Massachusetts. Um, Not a lot going on. there's like my school district is like a tri district, so there's three schools that go to my high school. So growing up, Merrimack is kind of exposed from the other two towns because we have our own elementary schools. But then when we get to middle school and high school, it's just all everyone. I mean, my parents would always get mad at me because I live on the opposite side of Merrimack, so like close to like another town and furthest away from like the high school. So when I'd ask to go to friends, I'd have a lot of friends in the other town that's like two towns away. So they get annoyed. What are we talking, like 10, 20 minute drive? Like 25, 30. That's a, that's a commitment. It is. I can see why they get a little bit, bit, little bit upset with you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so take me back to kind of when you started to play the game of football. I know that's kind of a story that all of you guys have, but when did you first start playing the game? Yeah, I started playing it in uh, fourth grade. Um, so my youth league, there was a rule where you could only start playing in fifth grade, uh, but they needed extra bodies like to create two teams and my brother was in eighth grade at the time um and then they kind of was like well he's pretty good I wonder if his little brother's good and then came in and then started playing football in fourth grade and then didn't really do much and then fifth grade I kind of started playing well and stuff like that one brother one sister what was it like growing up with them it was good I mean me and my brother were really competitive uh my dad especially would kind of put us in situations where we had to compete against each other, uh, especially like playing like flag football in the backyard or basketball. We have like a half court basketball in our backyard. So playing basketball and wiffle ball and all that. So my dad would kind of use us two to create competitiveness between each other. Uh, and then me and my sister, my sister's not really into sports. She's extremely smart. So she got that from my mother. Um, so, I mean, she's, we have a different relationship, me and my brother and then me and my brother. Um, we're kind of just more like civil and, just don't really talk about the whole sports thing. She kind of stayed away from the whole basketball court, flight yeah, football for sure. backyard thing. For sure. She, Is he bigger than you, your brother? No, he's like 5'11", like some short stuff. What about when you were thing. growing up? No, nah, I started. I was bigger than him when I probably got in like the sixth grade. So did you push him around a little bit? <laughs> the last time we like actually fought, uh, he's going to get mad if you're telling the story. He's going <laughs> to argue it didn't happen, but he was his ex-girlfriend was over, and he was probably what, like a freshman in college, senior in high school maybe. So I was in like eighth grade, and I kind of put him to the ground, and he uh, he wasn't too happy about that one. So we you were that guy. Had to, had to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So obviously he went on your brother Tim to uh, be an offensive lineman, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, Springfield College uh, football team. What was it like knowing that you had an older brother playing a little bit of college football, and kind of what you learned from him there? Yeah, I kind of. I mean, he, when he got there, he was supposed to play linebacker, and then he got moved to. Uh, offensive line he kind of faced a little adversity like the whole like school wise and like all that kind of stuff um and he kind of just stayed uh, persistent with it and did never gave up and kept trying to reach his goals to become a starter and play so I kind of learned that from him and it wasn't really only him like my my cousin uh, who was my head coach at uh, my high school played college football my uncle was offensive line coach uh, at UConn and UMass like all those kind of schools um so kind of growing up football was kind of like instilled with me and kind of expected to play kind of was there always kind of the expectation when you were little going through that you were going to try to go on and play at the next level? Even, I mean, high school obviously is high school, but was there always that expectation? Uh, it was kind of an expectation to play a sport. Yeah. And it didn't really necessarily have to be football. Um, to be honest, 
my freshman and sophomore year, I was kind of considered a basketball player. Um, but And then when I transferred schools, uh, football schools just kind of st- kept calling, and I, like, I guess football is it. So, What did you play in basketball? I played the two and the three. All right. Yeah. What else did you play in uh, growing up, little league, whatever it was? Yeah, I played, play them all? I played lacrosse, baseball, like those kind of. Lacrosse guy. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> East Coast guy, lacrosse guy. What yeah. is it like? If we were to put the fire in you, it's all under one household right now. If they're all in the room, maybe we're we're going to get a bite to eat, whatever it is. What do you guys like to do when you go back home? Uh, we kind of just hang out. Uh, my dad actually built a fireplace in my backyard. Um, he put some lights up, and we kind of just have fires. And s- sometimes we bring the TV out there if there's like a sports game on, and kind of just sit sit by there. He'll cook some food and just kind of hang out and enjoy some family time together. Have a favorite food he grills? Uh, his steak's good. Ooh. My mom makes a good beef stroganoff, which is my favorite. All right, we're going to jump back after this commercial break with a little high school football talk. You good with that? Yes, sir. All right, we'll be back with Pat Fryermuth coming up. This is a true freshman from a tiny school, the Brooks School in Massachusetts outside Boston. Greatest athlete ever to come out of that school, and he is big time. Unrivaled, the official podcast of Penn State football with your host, Mitch Gerber. Back with number 87, Pat Fryermuth, a sophomore tight end for the Penn State Nittany Lions as we welcome you back to the Unrivaled podcast, the official podcast of Penn State football. Pat, high school football, something that everybody, uh, when you grow up, you achieve to do, you want to do, you love playing under those Friday night bright lights, but Brooks School, what was it like? Uh, it was definitely different. Um, I mean, when I went there, I kind of expected it to, uh, like, the school, like, camaraderie, like, toned down a little bit because my public school was, like, 800,000 kids and my private school was, like, 390 kids or something like that. So there wasn't a lot of fans there. A little bit of a difference. A little bit of a difference. So, like, I mean, on average, we'd have, like, 100, 200, maybe, when we play a rival, like, 400 people. So it was a little different. Um but I mean, it was cool. Uh, just kind of, it was definitely the better football, though. But I mean, it was cool. Do you miss playing under those bright lights Friday night? I know it's a little we bit different play, now. We didn't play Friday night. What'd you play? We played because we had school Saturday morning. We, oh, no we, way. <laughs> yeah, so we had school Saturday morning. We had like a half day, and then we play like Saturday afternoon, late afternoon, or we play Saturday night. Um, it was definitely weird, just kind of like waiting because I would go to public school games Friday night, and it was kind of just like I could be playing right now, but. I mean, it was cool because they would kind of come support us. We'd support them, so it was kind of cool. So you had to get up on Saturday morning, go to school at what time? Uh, I kind of messed the system a little bit. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of had like, I kind of made it so I had a double sleep in, so I didn't have to go until like ten fifty, and I probably, I really only had one class. You're still going to school on a Saturday though. That had to be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, no, it was, the, it was the worst. It was wor- It was the worst thing. <laughs> so you played for your cousin, Coach Patrick Foley. What was that like? A little family blood. Uh, it was it was cool. I mean, growing up, like there's such an age difference between us that we didn't really have a close relationship. Um, but going to like him, like recruiting me to come play, was kind of cool. And then like going there, we built like we had this really good relationship after, and like we're very close now, and we text like all the time. So it was definitely cool um, from the family aspect, but the football aspect. I mean, he's a great coach. Like he coached in college level, and I learned a lot from him, and I owe a lot of this to him. Do you have a favorite high school football memory? Um, so when I got there my first year, we played our rivals. They're called Governors, and they beat us like 11 years in a row. And uh, we ended up beating them 6 nothing. So it was a real barn burner. A real barn burner. <laughs> a real barn burner. Uh, and then we continued to be ba- we beat them my junior year again. Lost them my senior year, but it was cool kind of like ending that like a, that long like, drought and beating a team that our rival who haven't beaten in a long time. With all like, what, 200 people in the crowd? That was the game where it was like 400 people because it was our rival. Storm the field? They did storm the field. Our fans did storm the field. It was cool. It was definitely cool. But yeah, it was it was it was an awesome experience. Is there a little trophy in, involved in that one too, or no? Uh, no. But there, I think we like fly like the other school's flag Ooh. on our campus for like a day or something All right. like that. Yeah. All right. So the recruiting process—that's obviously unique for everybody and how you land at Penn State. But for you. Um, everybody knows about your name. Everybody knows about the success you had last year, your freshman season. But how did you end up at Penn State and what the recruiting process was like for you? Yeah, um, so to start, uh, I actually got invited to like a Notre Dame uh, like spring game. 
and to start like I was really like excited and all that and I went down there and they didn't show me like any love at all so I was kind of discouraged by the whole thing like I don't know if I want to do this anymore um and then UMass my uncle was the coach and I don't know if he had any pull in it but he they called me and offered me a scholarship and I was like oh well maybe I got a future in this and then like UMass offered then BC offered then Syracuse like a bunch of other schools offered and I kind of took my visits and then Penn State kind of called me and was like if you come down to camp and then we can see what you do then we'll we'll offer you a scholarship and I came to the whiteout camp and just played my game and earned a scholarship and I mean it's kind of hard not to fall in love with this place when, you, when you're driving down the highway and see the stadium and all that kind of stuff and walk around campus and I fell in love with it the first time and came back for a second visit and ended up committing. Would you say there was pressure involved with your recruiting process? Because I think it's fair to say that all of you guys at the Division One level, Power 5 conference, you're at a top 10 school year in and year out. There's a lot of pressure with your decisions because of your talent. Was there some pressure in your recruitment process? Um, a little bit. Not really because I committed like my summer going into my junior year. So I com- considered committed early. Um, so and like when sc- and I'm like when I make a decision, like I'm good with that decision. Like I'm very loyal. Like Coach Franklin always tells me like I'm very loyal and all that kind of stuff. And so I mean I trusted him and he trusted me and I just wanted to remain loyal to the whole program and the whole fan base and never wavered on my commitment. And when schools would contact me, I kind of be like, I'm not I'm not leaving Penn State. So I mean, I had kind of tone that whole thing down. How would you say things have shifted even from your time of committing to it seems like year in and year out the recruiting process and you see all these prospects out there and it changes every single year, but kind of what it's become? Um, I mean, personally, I don't really like how the recruiting thing is going, like the whole tweeting out the offers and tweeting out pictures with the uniforms. And it's just like, to me, it's more of kids are liking it for attention instead of actually getting recruited to play football at college and I think with the whole transfer portal, like kids are learning, kids are only getting recruited to go to that school because um, they like the uniforms or like they like the coaches, and they don't really go to the school for the true aspect of what the school. Like Penn State has a great degree to offer in the the, the 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 largest alumni base, and I feel like kids don't really look at that. They look at the stadium and the uniforms and like what coaches text me the most and all that kind of stuff. And when they get there and they realize it's like not really like that, then like it's time to go to work, and they're not really down for that so there that's why the whole transfer portal and new recruitment thing I, it's a bad combination but it is what it is and I mean I think coach Franklin does a great job recruiting kids that actually love the game of football so I think Penn State will continue to be fine with that whole aspect tell me about the day you received an offer from Penn State I was I it was unreal I mean Penn State is obviously you just know for it um from its incredible past and Joe Paterno and all that and when Coach Ronnie told me and called me and said I have an offer from Penn State, I was I was kind of shocked. And when I hung up the phone, I like kind of just sat in my bed and was just like thinking to myself, like, "Oh my God, like this is a big time program." And I mean, I had to wait. Like I just was in shock, so I couldn't even tell. My, I told my parents like 20 minutes later. I was just like in my room, just thinking to myself, like, "Oh my God." So you're by yourself at the time. Yeah, when I answer, when I talk to coaches, I like to sit by myself, and I don't like my parents around because they like they're just looking at me and all that kind of stuff. I can respect that. You got to take a phone call like that away from your parents, but I mean, at what point from then on did you know that Penn State was going to be your home for the distant future? Um, to be honest, the first, like obviously the White Camp, I looked around and that was my first like big time like other than Notre Dame, my first big time stadium going in. And obviously, it's so much bigger than Notre Dame, so I was kind of like, well, this is crazy and all that kind of stuff. And Coach Franklin was like, the look in your eye right now is just priceless because you're just in shock. Um, and then I went to I visited Syracuse, too, and I kind of liked the whole dome thing. It was kind of cool. So then when I, I was ready to commit and I visited Syracuse and Penn State, those were my top two. And I was actually, I visited Syracuse first, and I was going to commit there and not come to Penn State. And then I was, my parents were like, just go test out Penn State one more time because, I mean, they're in love with it. Like They, they want to come down there all the time. Um, so then I went there and then just the whole coaches showed me love and kind of just like being like, you can really get this class started and all that. And then to go out to dinner with them and just go to the stadium one last time. And just, it was, I was like, yeah, it's the place for me. So your class, obviously that's a pretty unique, special class. Who are you closest with? Do you think, or who kind of, uh, do you guys bond with and what unique aspect do you guys bring with your class? I'd probably say my roommates are right now, like Judge, Cole Pepper, and, and PJ. Uh, we're really close, and, and Shorter and me are pretty close because we catch drugs all the time and do, like, a little route stuff together, and we kind of, like, 
put our knowledge off each other. And same, and like I'm close with a lot of them. I'm close with Zach because obviously we're in the same tight end room. Um, but yeah, recruiting class was cool. Um, just kind of being known as like a top level recruiting class and coming in here, and we all had high expectations. And some of us got to show them early, and, and the kids that didn't, they're they're working really hard, and they're and they're getting there to 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 show that they can do what the rest of us did. You and Judge ever going fishing together? <laughs> me and Judge never went fishing together. He, he's trying to get me to go shoot with him, but I'm not, I don't You're want not to. a huge, you're not about that. Nah, that kind of freaks me out. <laughs> Back with more with Pat Fryermuth after this break. <laughs> Unrivaled, the official podcast of Penn State football. Back with Pat Fryermuth, a sophomore tight end from Merrimack, Massachusetts, as we go on on the Unrivaled podcast, the official podcast of Penn State football. Pat, Heck of a season last year, most receiving touchdowns by a freshman with eight. One of four freshmen in program history to have two touchdown receptions in a game, joining Kyle Brady and Deion Butler, a whole bunch of other accolades. But as a whole, what did you kind of take away from this past season? Um, I kind of took away that I had the ability to compete at the top level, um, and I definitely learned that I couldn't be comfortable where I'm at, like continue to work and continue to grow better because there's other records out there to be broken, and i just working for that. How much do you listen to some of those postseason accolades? And obviously that's a good self-accomplishment, personal accomplishment, but you have to turn the page, I'm assuming, at some point. You can't read too far into those, but how much do you look at those? Um, I mean, when they first came out, I mean, I looked at it, and it was definitely, honestly, a blessing. And I mean, it was cool, but right now, like, I haven't, like, I don't let that define me. Like, that was my freshman year, and I have three more years left, and I'm just trying to continue to get better every year. Um, that's my approach every single day. Like when I go into the last building, I get better, like 1% better every day. And I take great pride in that. And if I don't do that, then you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And so I'm trying to get better every day. And um, I mean, I don't really, it would be cool to tell my kids like 40 years from now or however long from now. But right now, I'm not really too concerned with that. Take me back to the first time you caught a touchdown pass for the Penn State Nitty Lions and what that was like. <laughs> As most of you probably know, I tripped around the goal line. Uh, <laughs> wasn't one of the most athletic things I've ever done. Um, I kind of just – I caught the ball, and I saw no one. I was just like, well, I'm going to walk in. And Didn't I, happen that way. Nah, I was wearing new cleats. If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm going to make an excuse, I was wearing new cleats, <laughs> and I wasn't used to them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I tripped, and I kind of just dove off the line and hoped for the best, and they said I got in after the review. Like, the whole review thing, I was like, oh, my God, they're going to take it away from me. But – they didn't. It was a touchdown, and it was definitely it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life because it wasn't like a, just a simple touchdown. It was like I made it a lot harder than it needed to be. McSorley, he'll throw it. Caught by Frymuth, stumbles to the goal line. Touchdown, Penn State. I'll tell you, Frymuth made this hard. I'll tell you that. That's his he first. Comes up, <laughs> he puts his hand down. Yep. He stumbles on the turf out there, but he drops his right hand. His knees do not touch, and he dives into the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> Good news for you is the rest of them look pretty dang good throughout the season, so uh, that's good. But then a few days later, you guys welcome Ohio State into town, and you catch a touchdown pass from quarterback Trace McSorley in the back of the end zone. Dude, what goes through your head after you catch that one in absolute chaos? To be honest, like, I didn't even – I, I kind of blacked out, to be honest. Like, I didn't know what to do. Like, my celly was not good at all. Um, I kind of just ran around and pointed to the crowd, and, I mean – I, to be honest, I don't really remember what like what happened. Like what happened. To be honest, I, I remember like running over to the sideline and hug Tebow and and Coach Franklin. But that's about all I remember. Like it was it was crazy. Coach Bowen, <laughs> I mean, I wish everybody could spend a day with this dude, man. I mean, you see him around the complex, and he's always willing to stop, ask the extra question of how you doing today, how's your day, whatever it is. But what's it like to play for this guy? I mean, he's awesome. He's a great guy. Um, he shows so much passion in what he does, and he his true goal is to get us better every day, and I think he does that. I mean, he'll always, after every practice, when we come in the next day to watch film, he'll have um, a, a note card at our desk of three things that we can work, work on in that practice. Um, and that's just great knowing that he's actually watching the film and, and, and trying to like, get you better as a, as, as a football player. Um, and off the field, um, he just continues to like pound us with like, make sure you do your schoolwork, make sure you do the right things, and he really does care about you, um, every individual, even on the team, not just the tight end room, uh, to get better as a man and a football player. What is your major? Uh, labor employment relations. What do you want to do when football is over? If you had something lined up, 
Um, I want to be a football coach. Okay. Yeah, I just love the game of football and love everything it brings and, and brings to the table. And I just want to know more about the game and continue to put my knowledge on like younger kids coming up. I always think it's super interesting when you guys come in as freshmen, whether it's redshirt or true freshmen, you guys have a lot of changes within your body, whether it be eating and all that stuff. How difficult was that transition from you're playing at the high school level, you're living at home, you're doing your thing to this is next level? Yeah, it's difficult now. I remember the first workout I came in, I, I threw up. It was <laughs> it was tough. Um, Deej and his staff does a great job getting like all the players ready for the season. And um, I mean... Everyone on the team gives credit to them when their success comes, and I think it's it's valid because, I mean, they put their heart and soul into the strength program to get us better. Um, they're great guys, and, I mean, if you don't come in and work every day for them, then there's something wrong with you because they show so much passion in what they do, and, like, all credits to them. And, I mean, you kind of just have to take advantage of everything they put towards you. Who's the most interesting guy in your position room, aside from you? Bowers. Bowers, Why? Uh, he's just a weird dude. He's funny though. He's weird, but he's funny. I mean, some of the stuff he says is hilarious, and his actions he does. And I mean, we and him get along really good. And I mean, he's a funny guy. Give me your best Bauer story. <laughs> There's got to be a good one. There's a there lot somewhere. of stories. There's probably a lot of them. When we went to, when we were at Illinois. Me and him were roommates because I forget someone didn't travel or something. And um, so we got into the hotel room. And he was like, all right, I'm not getting up from this bed until we have meetings. And he fell asleep. Like, he cocooned himself in the blanket and the pillows and all that kind of stuff. And he fell asleep. And I was like, yo, Bowers, we have a team meeting right now. And he goes, no, we don't. Like, no, we don't. It's only 3.30. And I was like, all right, like, we do. So I pulled the blanket off him. And he was like, dude, what are you doing? And then he looked at his clock and we were like five minutes late. And he was like, oh, my God. So That had to go over well, being late for team meeting on the road before the game. Uh, I mean, we weren't like... We weren't like we weren't late because we were supposed to be like ten minutes early. We weren't late considered because we still were there before like the meeting started. But like five, like the whole coach Franklin ten minutes and early, and I mean five minutes late to ten minutes early is kind of that's his motto. Yeah, if you're not ten minutes early, you're late. So we kind of snuck in. We didn't really. (laughs) We snuck in good. What is it like traveling on the road? Because I don't think a lot of these fans necessarily know what it's like for you guys, Division One, Power 5 Conference. Um, there are some luxuries that obviously you guys have earned to be able to travel, but what is it like when you travel on the road? Uh, it's definitely different uh, going to a different school and trying to like get used to their like um, traditions and their tailgating and their fans and all that kind of stuff. And definitely going to enemy territory, it's definitely, it's definitely different because you don't have, like obviously Penn State travels well, but... When you go into like a Michigan or or Ohio State or Michigan State, like it's it's definitely different. It's it's hard to get used to, but once you're in the locker room with your team before the game, you kind of just embrace each other and it's like let's go to war and all that kind of stuff. So do you enjoy it? I love I love road games because it's kind of like if you do a great play, you kind of can just trust the crowd and just hear like the silence of the the stadium when you make a good play or your teammates make a good play. It's just it's it's a very good feeling. What's your pregame ritual routine? I know you're not necessarily like a huge routine guy, but do you have something that you have to go to, whether it be at home or on the road? Um, I usually have the same, like I do the same thing. Like um, if I, I'm very superstitious. So like if I wear like compression shorts, one game I do good, then I have to wear those same compression shorts. Um, Washed, I hope. Yeah, of course washed. Right. (laughs) Um, I listen to the same song on the bus before every like, before we go to the stadium, like when we get, like when we're driving to the stadium, I listen to the same song. What song? Uh, Put On by Young Yeezy. Classic. Yeah, I don't know why. I, just, <laughs> I love it. Um, and then when I'm walking from the bus to the stadium, like to the locker room, I listen to No Promises by A Boogie. Um, those are the two songs that kind of get me in my zone and get me going. So, There's only so many of you that get to experience that bus ride from the team hotel to Beaver Stadium. Put me in the head of Pat Firemuth. Tell me what that is like. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I remember the first time um, doing it against uh, App State. I was just kind of thrown off by the whole thing because, I mean, you're taking back roads of, of, of State College and all that kind of stuff. And, I mean, it's definitely – it's it's so cool. I mean, you get to go in the back of State College and, and like, in these trails and all that. And it's just – it's so cool. And it's going through the tailgating, it's just kind of – it makes you grateful and appreciative of where you're at and the opportunity that you were uh, you were given by Coach Franklin. I mean, just thinking about it now, like I can't wait till August 31st, and it's just, it's really, it's going to be an amazing season. 
What's your favorite part about walking through the, all those people, whether it be game one or the last game of the season at home? It's always full. That team walk, the team arrival, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just it's just amazing the continued support that uh, Penn State Nation has and how like they'll never give up on us and they always support us and it's just it means a lot that they're always there um, in, in supporting us and it's just a great feeling. We're gonna dive into a little uh, off the field stuff when we get back. All right. Sounds good. Back with more with number 87, Pat Fryer. Play action fake, McSorley back, steps up in the pocket, delivers. He's got Fryer move, touchdown, Penn State. What's up, Penn State fans? It's Mitch Gerber, host of the Unrivaled Podcast, reminding you to secure your seats inside Beaver Stadium today. To do so, visit gopsusports.com slash tickets. Unrivaled, the official podcast of Penn State football. <laughs> Back with Massachusetts native Pat Firemuth as he flips the page towards his sophomore campaign with the Nittany Lions. Pat, off the field, what do you like to do? Uh, I kind of just hang, hang out with friends, uh, play video games, um, just talk to family, and just go. Pretty laid back yeah. guy. What kind of video games? Uh, I like to play uh, FIFA. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and Madden and 2K, like all the sports games. When you guys go, obviously you're in camp season right now, and there's a lot of teammate bonding and stuff like that because you guys haven't been necessarily together for, I mean, since after spring ball, really. Um, is there something you guys like to do, whether it be your tight end position room together or if it's your group of guys or whoever it is when you're not at practice? Uh, yeah, we kind of just like to go get food, and usually the tight ends usually go to Chipotle a lot or, or Moe's. I'm a big Moe's guy, so I kind of convinced him to go to Moe's. Um, then we kind of just like to hang out, go to the pool, um, just when we had some downtime from camp and all that. When you put your stamp on Penn State, I know it's hard to look too far forward, but looking back on this past season and when you look ahead, what do you want people to say about you when you do ultimately leave for hopefully that next level in the future? Um, I just want to remember them to remember me by always doing the right thing, uh, never trying to make the program look bad always trying to bring the program up um, and just always working hard um, and never being comfortable where I'm at and just make like making sure that the nation knows that I gave them everything I have. Pat, I appreciate you stopping by, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you accomplish this season, all right? Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't forget to send us your comments, questions, whatever you have for us at Penn State Football or at Mitch Gerber 8. And as always, hit that subscribe button. Coming up next week, we find out how football saved a life. You're not going to want to miss that one. We'll see you then on the Unrivaled Podcast. Unrivaled, the official podcast of Penn State football.